Welcome to Back to Classic Car Cave. Um, so I got some quite a few uh, different comments on the uh, welding machine that I got second hand, um, and all of them were, were positive, which I think kind of shows that it was a reasonably good, it was a good deal to get. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of times with machinery. A lot of people mention this that um, you know you, you work on a vehicle, and if you're working on one, to go out and purchase this kind of stuff uh, brand new. Is uh, it's quite an expense, and you know if you've got many projects, then then fair enough. Or you intend to do many projects because nine times out of ten, with something like welding equipment, you can pretty much get half of back. Because actually, by the time you even go to sell it, if you finish with it anyway, um, it's already gone up in a massive amount of price anyway. So you'll always kind of get your money back, almost depending on what condition it's in. So if some, this is something to think about. Maybe think about going in with somebody, maybe three or four people that you know or you're in a club and buy a piece of equipment and buy top end equipment because you're going to all pay less money and use it between you. One of the uh, things I had, or one of the comments I had, I've had this comment a few times in actual fact over some period of time in the videos that I've put up, <coughs> it's about showing some of the actual work, you know, the actual putting the thing together, either welding it together or cutting it or whatever. <clears throat> I tend to not do that only because it takes such a long time to film and then you have to edit it and so on and so forth and uh, to be honest I would actually rather get on with the job but I will try to do a little bit more and show the actual work being done even if it's only in, sort of segmented in the little bits. Um, but as I said it does take a long time, the time you set up the show and you film it and then you have to edit it and obviously you can tell by the quality of my videos which are shit, which are rubbish, but people seem to like them anyway. Um, I actually show it just as it is because if I go into every little detail the video will be too long and I've noticed that the attention span of people is quite low. Uh, if you look back through the videos you'll see that they've only been on it a few minutes and then they've gone off. So, But I will do a little bit more and actually show some of the things and some of the techniques that I'm doing. Uh, rather than a kind of finished product. So I hope you enjoy this video. So I'm working on this back piece for the, the Citroen. This is going to be underneath the back tailgate. And what I've done is I've made this piece. Um, now what I'm doing is putting holes all the way around so I can plug weld it all the way around. But what, and what I have is one of these which is, is it does two jobs. It's got a hole puncher in it there uh, and it's got a, a juggler here. So it juggles the metal so you've got, when you put two one mil together, uh, you end up with, no, with, a, with a flat surface. Um, but the problem with it is the five mil, you've got to be really precise when you put the spot weld in that you catch it right in the middle and then move it round uh, with a spot weld. Um, so it's a, I, I don't know if they make these bigger. These are five mil and seven or eight mil would be better. So what I do is I just go round and open them up with a drill. Uh, with a 7mm. I mean, 2 mil doesn't seem a lot but it does make a difference when you're trying to get a really good spot weld on it. And it's a very basic tool, really not a lot to it. Um, it's basically just a matter of it gives, you, it gives you a nice guide to work to. I won't do it anymore because the compressor will kick in and it'll be noisy. But I'll do that all the way along and then I'll go along with the drill and just open these holes up. And you'll be able to see there the difference. You can see there, this is, these are the five mil, which is the punch that I've done. And these are the seven mil. So just that little bit bigger and it'll make a big difference when you go to spot weld it. Or plug weld it, I should say. So what I'm gonna do is, I'll get this, Fixed up. I've already, already pre-made this and screwed it on, so I know it's in the right position. And uh, this is a bit of a mess. So I know that we're in the right position. There and there. There we go. That looks like it's upside down. Just to check. Right. 
could be that way around. Uh, yeah, it could be. It must be that way around, sorry. That's, that hole lines up there. Okay, that hole line went in. Yeah, that seems to work. And then what I'm going to do is I'll weld it all on the back. Section. I'll put that on and then I'll spot weld all the way around and then when it's completely finished um, I will clean That's right, I think. what I'll do, then do is I'll clean this edge up here uh, where it's a slight overlap I'll clean it up with a finger grinder and then I'll lead load it um, so it's got a really nice edge to it. The idea is, is that the rear lights are countersunk into this tail, into this uh, backboard. One for a kind of design, make it look nice, but the other reason is, is when the back tailgate comes down, if you had the lights so they were flush, obviously the tailgate would hit the lights and smash them, with them being recessed inside here like a French, like French lighting, as it or, or Frenching in the lights. Um, there's no way the tailgate can smash against the glass or the plastic, so that's the two reasons I've done it. One is it looks nice, and the second reason is it's it's for a practical reason. I've just finished that panel on the back of the car. They're just two reflectors, but they've got chrome rings to go on them, and then the lights will go into them, and then the, obviously it will be the number plate holder. Obviously at the bottom there, I've got to go around the corner, so I have to bend the sheet to go around there yet. The other thing that I'm going to do with this is I've got these uh, corner wrappings here and I'll show you how they're going to look. So there they will go onto there like that and obviously they'll be screwed on this end but not on here because obviously the tailgate has to flap down and alternatively when they go on the side obviously they have to be cut in the middle but that's the same thing there. Uh, and obviously they'll be screwed on this side and not on, on the inside of that because the, 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 tail, the tailboard or the sideboard has to come down the way. So they'll be split and uh, I've got four of those. And obviously they will be split here where, where this comes down. So there's four of those to go on there. As I said, I'll make this skirt on the bottom, but I've got to bend it and I'll bend it in our bending machine, a pipe bender. And uh, yeah, so not a lot has changed on here. Okay, on the front, these are the two pieces I talked about, which as you can see, are in a pretty poor state. Um, for what they're gonna take to make, um, they're not really salvageable, so I will make two copies of each of those. And to show you what it looks like, you can see where that re recess is there, and these, these would obviously fit inside there like that uh, and then go into that recess so that, that, that's not even down there yet oh. yeah. all falling apart as usual and this one yeah I mean there's virtually nothing left of it so I'll remake that with the rolled edges and everything and, uh, and we'll see how we get on and, uh, and go from there so that one yeah, that's, that's that side. That's, that has to go in there. Don't know, pull it up on that. Yeah, it'll go in there. Fit into that recess. So I'll make them tomorrow. And uh, I'll just copy those basically and make new ones. And uh, yeah. And we're getting to a point, I think by midweek, I should be able to get everything screwed on that's going to be on it, the lights and everything uh, and then we'll take it outside and I'll do some really nice shots of it, some nice photographs, stills <clears throat> but I'll do it outside because it's a bit too busy in here for the photograph there's too, too much in the background and everything so I'll do it outside up against the wall so it can be seen better and there we are with that so we're cracking on with a bunch of things at the same time so, but as usual, stay safe, keep the faith, enjoy your hobby, and uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Take care, everybody.